so that you know everybody can uh, get everything they need, you know, because we couldn't, and uh, and it was wartime, so we had uh, you know stamps to take to the store and stuff like that, and I couldn't. Nobody wanted to tell you. Nobody wanted to impart it. Well, the, uh, you certainly don't don't get it in school. Uh, the, I recall uh, when I graduated from the Walton Elementary School. It's the first time that a teacher ever said, "Well, you're going on to junior high school now." You know, it was that that kind of lecture, uh, and you're going to start finding out that some of the things that you've been taught in the last six years aren't quite the way you've been taught them. And he was, he was talking about American history. And you know, I used to wonder when, when I was a kid about, you know, how come we're all, you know, the Americans are the only folks in the world who... Pardon me, who are Ron. Uh, maybe um, part of your answer uh, would be uh, looking at the problem uh, in this manner. Uh, you were asking the question, uh, Bob, uh, why didn't you know? Well, why don't, why don't any of us know? And one of the answers, and one of the, the way I would phrase the question would be that the fact is, in our society pattern, like every other society pattern, in order to keep that society uh, going, we are all trained or programmed into certain roles. Now, let's speak specifically of this society in which we live which uh, here in the United States, uh, we have all types of people living here, and we all are, are programmed to carry out certain role in order to keep this society pattern the way it's going. How else could we have a country that is, uh, everyone will say that knows anything at all, will say that we have enough wealth, enough know-how, uh, to, to, to eliminate certainly poverty in this country and poverty in the world. Yet and still, how is it that a whole country full of people uh, let what's going on in this country in terms of poverty, in terms of the war in Vietnam, is simply because of the one answer, one simple, for, simple answer you could give, is that we have been programmed uh, even before we were born. I think it was uh, Huxley who who wrote, wrote a book on uh, uh, telling about people being incubated. And I think that we were all incubate, incubated to carry out certain roles. And uh, the blacks, certain roles, but it is most of them, the poor whites, the, uh, the middle class so-called, or the well-to-do whites, everyone is programmed to carry out a certain role. And therefore, when, uh, when any problem comes before us, when a war comes up, uh, for example, when the war in 1940 uh, got started, in 1939 it got started, and people were presented with the idea that they must be uh, drafted. You had blacks, poor whites, everybody being terribly patriotic to fight the war for the four freedoms. Now, how could this be done when the blacks themselves certainly knew that they weren't, didn't have the pro, uh, for freedom, when at least the poor whites ought to have known, and when even the rich whites should have known it. Well, like, it that, came that about because of that, being that's programmed. Not, that's not really programmed. Uh, they don't care whether you're programmed to, the, the ruling class doesn't care whether you're programmed to what they want or not. If you aren't, you're going to buy by it anywhere. You're going to face um, brutality. You're going to face uh, all the fascist taxes that they're using now, or, or you'll just live in the system. It's either, um, the people that are programmed, as you call them, are part of the problem. Those that are not but have to still live in the system are a part of the solution. And they're trying to, to, to stop the programming to, yeah. to make people start to think for themselves. Well, you know, that's, you know, that's go back and you can cite Nat Turner, uh, Gabriel. Uh, they weren't programmed. I think that uh, people talk, talk in terms of uh, being programmed, but uh, they're programmed because they, they enjoy the little tokenisms that the system throw out to them, the little bits and the little bones that they throw to the dog. 
you see. So I think that it's not that the system so much uh, programming, it's just that uh, uh, they like the little, the little tokenisms or the little integration, as you know, some people might say that, that the system uh, 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 throws on. Well, well I, it's, I it's not the notion of programming itself, is it? Because I mean, every society programs its people and sure. incubates them into, into certain kinds of patterns. That's my point. Well, here we've got a you know a very complicated society, and, and I think the the question that we're talking about is how how you achieve personal and group well, freedom. Well, also, it, it may be phrased like this: How do we achieve achieve being unprogrammed? How did Nat Turner? How did you? How did anyone on this program or anyone who act differently different from what they were programmed to do? Now, I don't mean that there is certain groups of people standing by and saying, now let's program this person to this. But the society pattern is so set up, you know, no matter what society you're living in, it would be programmed, you, you would have a certain role to play. Uh, uh, no matter what, what makes you kick over the traces of what we're trying yeah, to do. Yeah, that's what, what we get What, what makes okay. you come what? to the point of awareness of this program right. to the point where you will do something about it? Right. Yeah, but that's, see, that's, one of the things that's really interesting about the programming concept that, that I was just thinking about now is that, in fact, people are programmed to think in terms of what we're all taught is that there are certain things that you can do individually, like you can grow up from a log cabin and become president, right? Everybody's somewhere in the early childhood. Yeah, I was never programmed that way. Yeah, but you know, you, <laughs> well, you I mean, know but what? you know the mythology. Right? I know the mythology, okay, of it, the but mythology. I was never programmed well, that way. Well, I don't mean way. that you know that you're really going to believe it. None of us really believe it. I certainly don't I believe it. I don't know. It, a lot of people right? do. Well, but all right. But anyway, that's one of the things that you, that somehow or other comes up in, in your early education, that, that right. people did rise. And the thing, that's something that individuals do as individuals. But the one thing that, comes on the other side of that that you're always taught is that as an individual the one thing you can't really fight is the system you can make it in the system in various I'll ways fight you fight it, fight it, right? you know, and it's it's these all of us fighting the system that's really beginning to make the system there. i clever. think white people are the ones that's programmed uh, you can't program uh, you can't program a person to accept a brutality and murder is being inflicted upon him uh, daily now what you can do you can uh, throw up a type of force that will uh, subdue him and make him submissive, but you can't program. I think that the white people, the white working class in this country, is the program people, oh, yeah. and that the wow. uh, 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 that the black people are the ones that's being uh, forcibly uh, repressed. So you know, when you talk in terms of, and it's like w what we were saying when we said that uh, uh, when we when we say that you have a program Negro, uh, we're talking about you have a you have a, a trained dog, you have a dog that accepts the scraps. You see why? Why all around him, uh, uh, the, the, the most rest of the canines are 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 being uh, are murdered and exterminated, and he's sitting around it, uh, uh, lapping off, you know, lapping off the uh, scraps off of the table. So, because so, he's willing so to be whipped, not program. Well, not because, because he's willing to be whipped, but but, but, but what, hap what happens is that you, I mean, you can't. It's true, you can't program people, like, at least not effectively, to accept brutality. But what you can do uh, is to program them to think that. If they're not making it, it's their own damn fault. And we've only begun to get a, to get away from this in you know since the depression, really, uh, to to when so so many people uh, found out that they weren't making it, that people began to look to to things in the system uh, that that weren't working for people. Well, what brought oh. this about? That people began to look for it, <coughs> didn't you? Uh, at least let me put it this way. I would say that. One of the things that brought about people on a whole, on a mass basis of realizing this programming that was taking place started probably in this beginning with the advent of the trade union movement itself, of bringing large numbers of workers together during the war. And people in, in the related industries came together and they began to see that their differences really are not as great as other people had them believe, that the programmers would have them believe. Wouldn't you say that this uh, brought this about and brought about awareness of the fact that you were programmed? It, it brought it, again, uh, uh, you've always had people who come to some awareness of that they, uh, I don't think they would put it in these terms, uh, but uh, in the 1930s when you had, uh, uh, particularly I'm thinking of terms of the, the farmers uh, down in, the was, was organizing and some of the uh, horrendous stories that came out of this, people being beaten and killed, particularly down in, 
in, in, in southern Missouri, in Arkansas, where these right. cotton sharecroppers, black and white, were forming unions. And this the planters could not abide by. And therefore, they, they had to do something. And, and you think that, uh, that uh, uh, the oppression that, that people get in such as, uh, as any group that's active, but take the certain the Panthers, you think that this is the only time in history that this happened? No, this is no. not. No, this is, uh, we continually, down through history, have gotten people for whatever reason, and maybe later on we will get a chance to mention some of these reasons, uh, people step out of the role which was created for them, uh, which uh, if the blacks were going to continue to be what Reggie was saying, then they must be, or the poor, they must then, for whatever reason, because of fear, because of, uh, of, of other reason, they must be able to remain in, in this subservient position. And what, what makes this, you see, is, is the type of problems that we are dealing with and also another problem we're dealing with is then what makes some people who see differently, as well as some people who t maintain that role, continue to maintain role, but these, the difference between the people that sees, uh, see the problem and, and do something is, of course, is a very good uh, difference and a difference that we'd like to encourage and like we like to talk about. And this is what I think Reggie uh, has much in his mind. I think part of the important thing about that is that there have always been individuals who have seen through what was going on and who have wanted to try to do something about it and who have tried to, but maybe what's most important about what's happening now is that a number of those individuals are managing to get together. I mean, the Black Panther Party, for example, is not just a collection of individuals. There's something more to it than that. Um, the group of people that I work with at, at the Health Policy Advisory Center, which is a long name for a small group of people, is not just a collection of individuals out doing a thing on our own. Um, and, and it seems to me that, and the student movement, however unfocused it may have been and however in, unpolitical sure. it is in some situations, really represents people who are beginning to see through things and trying to find some way to get together around it and to act in some sort of collective way, which is not to put down individual action at all, because I think that's very important. But I think that you know when we're talking about the, the kind of power that we're confronting when we confront the system. We really can't be talking about one or two individuals. Well, you, you never talk about one or two individuals except in history books where you, you make okay. kings and princes. And uh, newspapers. And newspapers sometimes, often. Uh, and and that, that's very true. And, um, we've got in Chicago uh, the, a thing called the Contract Buyers League. These are uh, black people who uh, during the days uh, when the Federal Housing Authority was not giving mortgages in, was not guaranteeing mortgages in changing neighborhoods, uh, had to buy homes uh, on contract. And what this means is that uh, you pay month to month, but you get no equity as you pay. And you don't own the place until it's all paid off. And the real estate speculators jacked up the prices initially. They charged outrageous rates of interest, uh, turned the neighborhood over in the space of uh, a year, and all these people uh, 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 have gotten rotten deals. They started getting themselves together uh, about two years ago. For a long time, until they started taking uh, direct action, it was either uh, you know, picketing the homes of the landlords or uh, confronting the banks that were you know, that held the loans and so on. The only thing that the press was interested in, and I, I, I ran into this because I was interested in doing stories about uh, what the people were doing there. All my editors wanted to know about was this nice young white priest who was out there doing research <laughs> for the Contract Buyers League. And so he became, had to become the focus of the story, much as he didn't want to. Well, what happens is yeah. um, the news media, as lo uh, uh, along with the ruling class, they don't want um, the, the real problems focused on, or they don't want, um, if, if everybody in, in Philadelphia really knew what the Black Panther Party was doing, or, 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 knew, or knew about the fact that they, all kids should get breakfast, all kids should have decent housing and everything, and they knew that they really weren't getting it, and that the government was responsible to get it for them, then the government would have a, a, a lot bigger problem than they have now. They'd, be, they'd have to have more pigs out there to kill more people off to keep everybody quiet. So what they do is they focus on the little people, 
are the, 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 the individuals that walk around doing their thing or running their faces. And, and they make these the good guys. And the people that are, are, are really trying to do something to better their conditions, uh, they either sure. overshadow them or they just black them out. Right. Uh, uh, you know, this is uh, what we talk about when we talk about it, alternatives. Uh, when the party was started, it was started as an alternative uh, to, the mur to the murder and brutality that was being inflicted upon black people. Uh, mm -hmm. Huey Newton and Bobby Seals just stood up and said, well, no more. You right. see, uh, 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 we've, t well, we've taken it for too long, and uh, this is the alternative. Uh, uh, we recognize what, uh, what the power of the gun means. Uh, when they started talking about the uh, hungry children that were going to school, we just didn't sit back and spread out rhetoric. Uh, we set up some, some type of alternative. Uh, the Constitution clearly uh, gives the people uh, in this country an alternative. Uh, Any time the, the, the system or the government doesn't work in their interest, they do have an alternative. And the people, uh, uh, the people have to understand that. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I wasn't born a panther. You see, uh, uh, I was born black, so that was 99%. Uh, to good start. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, to uh, help develop uh, me into a panther or, or somebody who uh, will become part of a black revolutionary uh, force. Now, over a period of years, uh, I was programmed, uh, not a program to accept brutality. I n uh, black people never accepted that. Uh, I was just programmed more or less to uh, challenge blindly communism. Uh, the way the American people are programmed to the aggression that's going on in the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, I think that the government is becoming afraid now because of the alternative that the American people has given them, you see. And this is what, uh, you know, this is what we're talking about. Uh, uh, we're talking about that the white people are, are programmed uh, to accept the murder and the genocide that's being committed in the black community but yet they can focus their attention and, and start talking and hollering and screaming about uh, murder and genocide that's being inflicted uh, or imposed upon people uh, 10 or 15,000 miles away. So you know, that's a great contradiction within itself. They're, they're doing absolutely nothing uh, to support or any kind of uh, armed force to offset the murder that's being inflicted upon uh, black people in this country. Sure. But uh, they're sending med uh, medicine, medical supplies to uh, Hanoi and and possibly some of them are sending guns. You see, so, 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 you know, this is what we talk about when we talk about in terms of people being programmed. Well, part well, of what's part important there, too, that is that, that um, when particularly white people find themselves upset about that, those kinds of situations, and want to do something about the murder, what they get channeled into is programs like VISTA or programs um, like go and work for one of the, the more the human service agencies, right? So you go work for the Urban Renewal Agency or you go work for the Housing Agency or you go work for the Health Department and that's supposed to be the way that you're going to help solve all these problems. Well, the only thing that's sure. so well, there's, there's that yeah. beautiful ad, you know, for the, right. for the Peace Corps which says, you know, it's got this, this nice young white fella standing uh, with a little Indian family someplace in South America and, it's, and the, the line says, uh, try to tell these folks that the, the Peace Corps is a, a lackey of U.S. imperialism or whatever. Well, there are very, very few Peace Corps guys, you know, who think that the Peace Corps is anything but a lackey of U.S. Right. imperialism. Well, yeah. you, uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, this is because uh, people can, can, can see that it's the government, that it's the government that's uh, forcing people to live in uh, poverty and in misery. And now, uh, the government, uh, we said it when the, first, when the program first came on, that uh, this country is in a position to eliminate poverty, not just in this country, but almost throughout the world. You right. see, so, uh, so what they do, they set up these little lackeys, that's what, that's what this is, uh, they, these law. Uh, so is the government, lackey. they're just well, lackeys for the banks. Well, <laughs> well, 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 well right, the administration is, yeah. is just a lackey for the ruling class in this country. So, uh, so what we're talking about, we're, t we're trying to give the people an alternative. In the black community, we're saying that uh, your children are hungry, so set up a breakfast program for them right. as an alternative. Right. But, but uh, ultimately, uh, the only uh, uh, alternative that the people in this country can have if they want freedom, if they want power, and that is to, uh, to, t to, to, to take this struggle to, to the highest level. Uh, the highest form of politics, what we say is war. You see, uh, w uh, we believe that war is just a continuation of politics, but with bloodshed. You see, and this is this is the way we feel that uh, uh, the the alternative that the people in this country will have to 
to, to bring about the necessary change to get the desired uh, responses uh, uh, from the pigs and the power structure to, or, or, or the ruling class, and that's to uh, just overturn everything. And we don't see it as a bad thing because uh, I think it was Thomas Paine said that uh, behold us if we don't have revolution every 20 years. Of course, when we speak Tom of, Jefferson, I think. <laughs> when we speak of, <laughs> of, of, of revolution, <laughs> revolution, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, the way that uh, we've always talked about it and write about it is that when you say revolution, people immediately think that revolution for a complete change, and that's what we're talking about in definition, uh, that it comes about through through the gun. And this is the way that all revolutions, uh, so-called from my point of view, uh, that history shun shows, this is the way it's been done. And and we have in a number, uh, history has shown in a number of revolution for, for change. Uh, and it's been, they've all been done in this manner. It seems to me that uh, at this point of history, in this point of human development, uh, that we might be just as 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 uh, as objective and scientific in looking at this method of getting revolution to where it's gotten us to. Uh, see, the matter of revolution didn't come just uh, just recently, uh, and the matter of picking up guns for it didn't come when the Panther came along, or when anyone else came along in this period. This is the way it's been done. I wonder if we look at this method of revolution, and uh, uh, and how we have and where we where we have gotten as to whether it would call for a scrutinizing of it and see whether some changes should be made in the way of getting revolution. Maybe it should. Uh, and I think that, uh, at least from my point of view, I'd like for people to, uh, at least for us to look at this. Uh, you, you have uh, your, your American Revolution, so-called. Uh, you had the Russian Revolution, and you had the Chinese Revolution, recently the uh, uh, the, the Cuban Revolution, just to name a few, and there are all other, uh, many other revolutions that could be named. And we are still at the point of dog eat dog. We're still at the point of wanting to kill somebody and this type of thing. Uh, uh, and, and, and I wonder if, if we are going to be revolutionists, if we don't want to also find a new way of getting revolution, rather than the old true and tried and failed method, not the true and tried win method, in my opinion. See, I think you have, to, you have to look a little bit more. You, you can't write it off as saying that's the only way that revolutions have been tried and that's the only thing that we're moving toward. I mean, what Reggie just said is that the ultimate thing is going to probably or very likely have to be, have to involve war between the people and the power structure. But there are a whole bunch of things going on now, for example, that are all, the, the, What's building toward a revolution, if that's where it's going, is many more things than just people picking up guns. You said yourself the revolution was a complete change, right? Right. Okay, well, there's been a complete change in the fact that kids, all kids, whose mothers didn't feed them or who, whose mother didn't have the money, went to school hungry. Well, see, now there's been a revolutionary change in that. They're now breakfast programs for these children. No, what that, we're that, doing... That, that's only no, a stop no, that. No, 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 I'm not saying that, that isn't Now, now what I'm saying is, it, it, it helps, you understand? That, okay. that helps those kids. What I'm saying is, okay, okay. You, to, in order to, start, uh, to have a revolution in America, you got to start somewhere. Well, and I'm if, sure. so in, if I, everybody's I, so I concerned, sure. everybody I'm, I'm do your own thing if you're talking about helping the people. Right, yeah, that's what's going on. Bloody bloodshed and revolution comes as a last, you have no other consequence to offer, you've tried everything else, and you've, you've worked to, to try to build a better society without shedding blood, and it hasn't worked. So what you do now is you pick up a gun and, and to, to, to throw over the, stru uh, the, the, the power structure so that you can get the people something. Sure, this but, you, is, but you know, you know, you're, well, you're, this is what you it's know all yourself about. that, the, that the, you know, the, the Panthers, uh, you know, don't go out and attack uh, uh, the power structure with guns. I mean, you you don't do that because you you, you can't win it at this point, right? All right, right. But, uh, yeah. Okay. And, this and is what but it's what's all about. so what's so what's going on is, you know, you develop that ideology, okay, and and people are doing all kinds of things all over the little projects getting started here, there, uh, different uh, groupings of you know political kids, political older people. Uh, the, the Panthers are, are getting one thing together. Uh, one of one of the most exciting things is is that uh, under the leadership of the Panthers, uh, 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 other oppressed groups, in, including uh, uh, at least in Chicago, young white Appalachian yeah, kids, 
uh, and in New York too, and and the uh, and Puerto Rican kids have have gotten together into what they call the Rainbow Coalition. Right. Okay. Fine. You know, that's a that's a great thing, and and so we, you know, all these things going on all over the place, and sort of everybody feeling his way toward. I you would. Know, uh, you know, we 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 talk about uh, alternatives. Uh, the, the, the Black Panther Party or black people are trying to give the government the alternative to say, well, well dig it. We are in a position uh, to see that uh, people's basic necessities are uh, requirements uh, to a decent life uh, can be insured. You see, uh, we're saying that uh, uh, we don't have to live like, like dogs. We don't have to be re treated like dogs, and we do have freedom. Uh, we have human freedom, you see. And uh, uh, the Panthers are, are, are standing up, and they're saying to the government, say, well, this is your alternative. Now, the government or the pigs or the power structure be the ones that determine the intensity of the, uh, the confrontation. Mm -hmm. If they don't accept the people's uh, uh, ultimatum or uh, say, well, you got the money, you got the food, let it go, release it, and uh, build decent housing, and so forth. If they don't accept that ultimatum from the people in, in which the people are only asking to, to be able to live a decent life, then uh, the people won't, will be left with no other choice. I, I'm quite sure that this is the way all revolutions uh, uh, came about. Uh, nobody, no revolution, uh, no revolutionist just picked up a gun and formed an armed band mm -hmm. and did, sure. did something without going through an educational phase. And this is what, uh, uh, this is the process that we're in right now. Uh, uh, we're in an educational phase and, and the pigs of the power structure understand that uh, what we're talking about uh, to the people uh, is in the interest of the people and the people will, will pick up this education. So this is why uh, the Black Panther Party is, is catching all this uh, hell as far as repression uh, goes in this country, you mm -hmm. see. Uh, sure. uh, 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 we're not just advocating people just pick up guns and run out in the street like madmen or fools and start shooting up everything. We're talking about uh, understanding uh, how you can go about to get your basic necessities met, such as free breakfast, free medical clinic, uh, uh, co-ops, uh, mm -hmm. uh, markets, or, and housing, it, and what have you, you see? Yeah. And once the people understand that, then they can see the contradictions in the government. A lot of that kind of program has led a little bit, at least in New York, it and as far as I know other places as well, it seems to be leading to finally some concrete alternatives for white people who um, have been told rightly and appreciate the fact that they shouldn't be tailing on other people's movements and that, you know, the, after all, if we come out of the belly of the monster, we've got something that we need to do about it. And one of the things that's been happening that, that I've been involved in that other people are involved in is trying to use all those skills that they gave us in the course of training us to be whatever we were supposed to be mm -hmm. as a way of really getting out open what the system is all about. I've worked with a group of city planners in New York, for example, who uh, deal all the time on their jobs with information that is legally public information. It's supposed to be public information, but in fact it all gets buried in the files. And so one of the things that that group of people took on itself to do was to make that information available before it was officially released through the newspapers with all the things that happened to it there to the groups that were, whose neighborhoods were being messed over, and whose neighborhoods were being essentially destroyed largely for luxury housing. And uh, that seems to have embarrassed the government a great deal. And the reason it embarrasses the government is that the government is filled with all kinds of well-meaning people who are trying very hard. But in fact, they don't have any power either, because the power, mm -hmm. as far as neighborhoods goes, lies with the people who control the mortgage money. And that's not city planning commissions or urban renewal agencies. That's banks. Um, there's been some stuff like that going on with the health system all over the country. And one of the things that's, that's been very exciting for us is being able to work with groups like the Panthers and the Young Lords in New York um, supplying whatever information we can supply, supplying resources, finding doctors who want to work in free clinics. Um, that's not going to, that's not itself going to make the revolution by any means, but it's, it's a way of beginning to understand and, and finding out how much we really need to understand and whether it's all as complex as we've been taught that it is. And it turns out a lot of times it's not. I mean, you can understand the health system. Anybody can understand the health system. And all this stuff about having to be an expert and a medical sociologist or a public health PhD is, is really nonsense, and it just keeps people from ever really questioning, ever really thinking that their own knowledge of what's going on and what's happening to them is valid. Right. You know, I just want to say that I think that uh, Elders Cleaver uh, gave the American people one of the uh, best uh, 
alternatives or ultimatums, and that's when he said that either you're part of the solution or you're part of the problem. That's, uh, uh, the conditions, it's just like uh, uh, he was saying when he, when he talked about revolution. A lot of people just, when they hear the word revolution, they, it, it makes Shrivel. them jump back, right. It, 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 it makes them jump back it. in a corner, makes them jump back in an alley. Uh, it's the same thing with uh, fascism. Uh, uh, we found that when we go out and we speak to groups and we start talking about the, fa the fascist tactics that are being employed uh, in the black community, that uh, white people can't even relate to that. Uh, they can't understand it because when they hear fascism, the first thing they equate it with is the six million Jews piled, six million bodies piled up somewhere. But uh, 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 Mussolini's terror, you know, uh, all the terror that he inflicted on, on Italy and the Italian people and, and, and other people, you know, they only they, they can only equate that uh, in one great ball, and you know they don't just take it in, in its context that uh, the terror and the fascism was used little by little, and uh, after the, the the reign or the regime was over, it was all compiled into history, and that's what made it so uh, atrocious, you see. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, you know, when we talk about a programmer again. I think that uh, that the people in this country are programmed, uh, well, well, white people uh, in particular, are programmed to just throw off certain words and uh, treat certain words as uh, communism, yeah. as anti-American and uh, un-American and everything else, you see. But uh, if this is supposed to be a, a highly technical country and the people here are supposed to have such a high educational uh, a level, then uh, I think that they could see uh, exactly what uh, what we're talking about and what the what, what's necessary for the people in this country to do, and that's to give the government the the alternative, you know, or, st or start alternative programs. Well, I uh, I um, say that we have, in our own small way, over in the Strawberry Mansion areas, have our own alternative. We have tried to look over our community on a small basis and see some of its needs and some of the things that we could do as an alternative to some of the problems that we're faced with. And I, I, say, I dare say that the rest of the country is faced in the same way with the same things. And we have found that the cooperative way of people learning to work together, and this black and white, uh, working together to obtain a common in a common being for all that is not just only the black kids that are suffering from this but as we spoke earlier uh, I see the same thing in Kensington the Kensington where here you have white poor kids who don't have breakfasts either you know and uh, their answer to it is going to be uh, I dare say is working in somewhat the same manner of trying to find a way in which all people can work together cooperative. We find this working in housing, cooperative housing, whereby the uh, power structure, the, the uh, city uh, has failed in providing decent housing, that we the people are going to have to do something about it. And the only way we have found is through that method. We need health centers, clinics. We need doctors uh, available. We even need drugstores in our area. You can't even get an aspirin after 6 o'clock in the afternoon. You can forget it. I mean, the person is <laughs> just for the one of an aspirin. So what do we do? We sit down and said, well, it's up to us, black folks, white people who live in this community, to try to provide some of these things. Now, we haven't reached the stage that you have reached, uh, Reggie, but it's working in that direction, I, I would dare say. It all goes into the cake to make this thing more binding. Uh, no, go right ahead, sir. Uh, I, I, I'm still concerned about uh, this rhetoric uh, that we use about uh, black on the one hand, white on the other hand, in terms of this American society. White are programmed or taught to do this, and black are taught to do this. Now, if you're talking about formal education, then the black and whites are taught very much the same thing. Uh, they taught you go to any any college, I don't care how you describe it, and they are taught very much the same thing. Uh, even uh, when I was a child in Arkansas and in uh, going in going to schools there, very same thing were taught. Same very misinformation about history was taught. 
just as in high school, there wasn't any difference in terms of the basic educational structure and what uh, is being taught. Now, it was, it was, uh, uh, there were certain subtleties about this whole teaching uh, that each person would get the point, the point, that is, if he were black, he would know that when you talk about anyone can be president, I was supposed to know that uh, I wasn't supposed to, it didn't need me. And no right. one ever told me that, you know, you're black, you, you can't be, but in a way I got it. But nevertheless, That's this nice. rhetoric was used right in Arkansas, in the, in the school I went to, only a black school went to, and that same rhetoric was taught. As a matter of fact, uh, you, you have people black who believe this rhetoric right now. I just heard Jimmy Brown. I mean, I just read a piece about Jimmy Brown, and he was a stolen uh, capitalism because he's a pretty wealthy guy. Uh, uh, and any of these people who have who have made it good in this society, materialistically speaking, or educationally speaking, they all have a stake in this society, just as the average white person do, who, who consider. So therefore, when I, I I cannot separate these people. I think if we're going to understand where, where we are, we have to see it not in terms of black and white in that way. You've got to see that we're all a part of this thing, that we all have been miseducated, that we we all in this boat. And if this boat sink, all we're of all us, gonna we're all right, going well, look, with it. Look at it this way. As far as education goes, now, now you say everybody gets the same miseducation. Some of that education as far as Dick and Jane going around with spite after school and stuff, might be relevant to some, to some white kids. But no black kid is taught about the gangs on the street, talk, taught about the pigs in this community. No black kid is taught about the fact he's got to live with roach, roaches and rats and everything else because they don't consider that relevant. Education is supposed to teach you how to deal with your society, your environment. It's, te it's supposed to teach you how to continue to grow. No, it no, doesn't teach that to black kids. I didn't say anything. It's some, that some, it to anybody. Now, wait a minute. Right. And right. some white kids, when they go to school, some of the stuff that they learn helps them. You understand? Yeah. They, they, it helps them to continue to be, uh, to, uh, when their father steps out of the girl. capitalist uh, shoes or the pig shoes, they can step right in and continue. No black kid can do that because um, his, he, he, his father's not in the ruling class. His cousins or, or, or num nobody else, you understand? That's so that what education. That's miseducation, my dear. Uh, right, but um, when you say that everybody gets the same education, that ain't true. Black kids don't, the, the, the education is entirely different. Mm -hmm. The education in the poor uh, ghetto schools in, in, in Philadelphia, as contrast to the, to the schools for uh, uh, people that can pay are, are t it's totally different. Basically the that, same. Well, you know, Basically I think the that, same. You know, I think that what well, you said about Kensington, uh, when, well, when you talk about uh, hungry kids in, in Kensington, uh, uh, we know that's a fact, but uh, we also know it's a fact that if, if a black person show their face down there to feed some hungry kids, they'll probably get it shot off. Uh, that's right. Uh, because, uh, because racism is ingrained in the society. Right. You see, and... Uh, you know what we're talking about, and what we what we have to constantly get out to the people is that uh, they do have the power to offer an, an alternative or, an, or set up an alternative program. They uh, uh, they they don't have to go on a straight uh, programmed or or a designed direction that they that that they can break they can break with the uh, establishment with with the old order. And I think this is this is probably the biggest hang up uh, because people can't seem to break with the traditions or break with the uh, established order. Reggie, I think all of us would agree with that analysis as far as what I've heard everybody yeah. say. So, so I, I think all of us would agree with that I analysis. I just want to point out before we get too much farther away that, that uh, when you were talking about all that different kind of education where, in fact, you knew it wasn't true that you could grow up to be president, but the rhetoric still included that you could, it's in the Constitution that women can't, right? I mean, women get a whole other thing. And one of the things that, that women are very cleverly used for and which in fact, women are beginning to rebel against now is, is this whole training that comes a lot through the Dick and Jane readers, that what you're supposed to grow up and want is a house and a car and um, you know, a vacuum cleaner and uh, maybe, or two vacuum cleaners, one for the upstairs and one for the downstairs, and all the rest of that kind of stuff. And that, that that whole programming of wanting more and more and more, some of which, granted, is necessary for a certain kind of uh, moderately comfortable life. I mean, you do need breakfast for your kids, right? and everybody can agree with that, but it's not entirely clear that every family needs a car. Um, certainly not when people are starving all over the world and when cars are just stinking up the air, nobody's gonna be able to breathe very soon anyway. And I think it's, it's important to recognize too that, that among the groups beginning to fight back is a, over half the population is women. Mm -hmm. um, women are refusing, beginning to refuse to be taken in by all that consumer stuff now. 
I, I'm not sure. I certainly wouldn't advocate women uh, trying to be president as the answer to our problems. I really think that just being president. I don't think there's any any uh, blueprint answer to any of these problems. I think that uh, it's a combination of all these things that's going to really be the answer. Bring it all together. See, I really think the base of it is people being able to get uh, is, is something that you were describing an example of people getting out from under the brainwashing that they have to wait for somebody else to come through with a program. And really people, and, and a whole notion that there are experts or there are government agencies in charge or there's somebody whose job it is to do it. I mean, the, the breakfast programs are probably the best example, and, and there's some free schools all over the country where people are setting up their own schools to give the kind of education they think their mm -hmm. kids ought to get, where people go out and say, all right, it needs to be done, we'll do it, and they do it. And the kind of confidence that comes from um, beginning to do something and then actually doing it, I think, is really, in many ways, the key to the whole thing. Well, why is it so hard to get people to see this need. Well, because it's hard to do those things because, you know, look what well, because happens. The you're a lawyer defending because the papers the and your the office gets burned. Sure, because the alternatives right. are scary. That's, that's what it is. And not, not only scary in terms of, you know, your office getting burned or getting raided by the cops or whatever, but, but simply scary in, ter in terms of personal values. Uh, that is, you know, if you, if you grow up in a, in, in a certain way that says that, uh, like most people do, that says, uh, well, you've got to fit in a niche. You've, 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 you've got to have certain kinds of status things which involve certain amounts of money and, and things like, you know, and certain family patterns and, and certain career patterns, and things like that. And you, you want to break out of them. Then it gets scary because, well, if you've got a family, you don't know how you're going to feed your family. Uh, uh, if it's just you personally, uh, you know, do you have the inner resources to, to do that on your own? Uh, have you got people that you can do it with? Uh, all those kinds of things. And, th and then, there's, then there is the real repression that, that you've got to face because you know, it's, it's not just uh, you know, people who are throwing bombs who are getting repressed. Uh, one of those uh, sort of jerry-built schools, uh, it wasn't even built, it was in somebody's home, uh, class of uh, 10 or 11 uh, early teenagers and one teacher got raided by the cops for not having a license. Somebody pointed out you don't need a license in Illinois. In New Haven. They got arrested they, anyway. In New Haven you know. they did it, they had a slightly more subtle technique with a preschool that and some it, friends it, sure, started their and these, ago. these kids they were They said you had to have hot yeah. water, right? The school, the, yeah, right. the regular elementary a, school down the block, the school was being run in the basement of a church. The regular elementary school at the other end of the block doesn't have hot water. It hasn't had a, it has never had hot water. Yeah. Something so, that might so, be free. So the thing is, to, is that people have got to get out and demonstrate that you can do it. <laughs> you know, yeah. And, uh, and not get killed. So I don't know. If, Oh, pardon me, Margaret. Go right yeah. ahead. Uh, something that might scare a lot of people is the fact that, uh, as far as that programming goes, you're programmed to think that you live in a democratic society, that um, all you have to do is work hard, study hard, and you get ahead. And when you finally sit back and, and really look and see that you can't, no matter what no. you do, and that, they, that at any given moment you might be enslaved or wiped out completely, that's scary. And then you decide you're going to do something about it. And, and that kind of fear I think everybody needs. I don't know. I gave my greatest fear. I guess I got over my fear when I found that letter back in 1943 that my friends and neighbors found me qualified for doing the armed services. <laughs> That's when I got over my scare because, as I said before, I, I reached a point where I said, look, what is this? I can go four corners of the earth and I can fight for democracy supposedly and freedom for everybody else. What <laughs> happens to me as an individual? What happens to black people here in this country? At the same time, we had the situation was going on in Mississippi. As uh, the soldier Ike uh, Woodard got his eyes put out in North Carolina, yeah. this is when, 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 when the whole thing, I became aware of something, something is wrong here. Something is definitely wrong. I remember and I recall this because I enlisted in, back in uh, 1941, and I had an Army officer tell me at Second and Chester at the courthouse that, what are you enlisting for? This is a white man's war. This is a fact. You couldn't enlist in the Air Force then. They didn't want you. Then when the situation changed, okay. But uh, these are the things that made me uh, into the type of person I guess I am today in, in fighting for this. Because I said, if I can fight for somebody else, I can fight for it right here in Philadelphia. Well, I think that, uh, you, know, we, you know, we talk about uh, all this misinformation 
and uh, I think that what we should be talking about more or less is is how people can can go about to set up to gain control of the schools, to gain control of the police departments, uh, to gain control of everything that affects their lives. Uh, uh, there's no reason, with, like in Philadelphia, uh, I don't, you're not from Philly, but. Uh, sure I am. Uh, <laughs> you are. Um, five or six black people have been murdered, and not one white person, uh, or the one that, that, that is standing up, and that's uh, Councilman Cohen, uh, I mean, they they're, they're really not participating in anything, and they see this murder, they see this wanton, this blatant murder uh, going on right around them. They see the holes in the police, policeman's story. Uh, uh, they killed Harold Brown, and the story was so full of holes that, that they had to try him for assault and battery. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they've been constantly reading the papers after then that, that uh, black people are being shot, uh, black people are being hung in their cells by uh, uh, bodies, racist, uh, uh, right. pigs because that's what they are uh, and none of them none of them are trying to mobilize some uh, some kind of force a political force that will be able to 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 deal with that situation they're just sitting back laying in the cut sure. and, and, uh, it's very, and then when you start talking about black people right. uh, when we start talking about arming, arming our people to ensure that this doesn't happen then then immediately they, they become yeah. afraid because uh, uh, you know it's basically sure. uh, and you know and the, the media the media are really crucial to that because we, we had a situation in Chicago last December where uh, cops came in five o'clock in the morning at the Panther not the Panther headquarters but an apartment where a lot of the Panthers were staying shot the place up killed two of them including Fred Hampton, the chairman of the Illinois Panther Party. They made a mistake, the cops did, which is that they didn't lock the place up when they left. And the Panthers went back, because it was in the middle of a black neighborhood, uh, the Panthers uh, opened the place, and thousands of people, black people and white people, started filing through that apartment and looking at it. And it was perfectly obvious when you went through there, that if the Panthers had been able to fire any shots, uh, it wasn't more than one or two, and there were bullet holes all over that place. They, had a, they went in there with a machine gun. And the media were very timid about it. And so we, uh, you know, we put together a, a bunch of reporters, about 12 reporters, uh, to go and, and do this thing thoroughly. But it wasn't until uh, one of the papers, the Chicago Tribune, got hoodwinked by the state's attorney's office into publishing some phony pictures saying that, that things in the apartment were other things, uh, that the other newspapers and the TV stations finally sent people out to look at that apartment. Now, thousands of people in Chicago had been through there, and there was, there was a, a tremendous thing building up there because every, you know, everybody who had been there was convinced that the police had gone in there and killed those people deliberately. And, but it wasn't coming through the media until this phony thing happened with the Tribune and then the other, pap the other papers and the TV stations went out there and started taking pictures and then it started building up that maybe that did happen. And it was totally incredible to any of the, to any of the, the editors uh, and, and TV producers that 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 could have happened, that the cops would go in and deliberately kill somebody. Now it's not so incredible because they went out there and looked at it. Yeah, but again, still no alternative. You see, yeah. this, is, uh, uh, this is what we're standing up, this is what we're talking about. Uh, uh, Bobby Seals was bound and gagged in court. Uh, the American people didn't believe it could happen, and the newspaper projected uh, Bobby Seals as a, as a raving, mad black man that had to be sh uh, shackled. But the papers also treated that timidly by, by not stating the sure. fact that for five weeks he sat in his seat quietly and observed all, of, uh, all the laws and the regulations of, right. of the court. And he just kept demanding that one right, that one basic right. Now, after he was bound and gagged, the American people still or uh, the American white people, the working white people, they still didn't, uh, didn't recognize this for what it was, uh, out, out terror or repression of, of a black person. That's, well, that's what they saw, sure. uh, keeping a black man quiet. But they, they, they failed to realize that this is something that is laying the groundwork for everybody. But just here in Philadelphia about two weeks ago, there's a black man on trial, his life was at stake. 
and he had something to say, uh, they appointed him a court, a, a court appointed lawyer. And he, and, and he wanted to raise some questions and the judge just told him to shut up and sit down. The man's life is at stake. So what does the judge do? He, he, he gags and shackles the man. And this is, uh, this is a continuation of, of things that will continually happen. Sure. Uh, with, uh, 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 I don't even know if the, this is a frightening the part of the fact that it is happening, right. and happening and right. will continue to sure. happen until and people the, move and on. And the, the, media, the, the, media myth, the, day, the media myth the is, that, is, that Bobby, is, that, is that Bobby Seale uh, was deliberately disrupting the court and so on and so on, and they had no alternative. But what? The, uh, they had a very was, simple alternative. All they had to do was give him his lawyer. Right. You but know? see, besides that, because <laughs> that, that was what it was I all think about. in some ways the more important question is Bobby Seale did a great service to a lot of people by making that come out in the open, where they had to actually put a gag and chains on him. But that kind of process goes on much more subtly and has the effect of keeping people quiet and keeping people uh, behave. And it seems to me that, you know, what you describe about the media being able to, uh, because people did get to go and see the apartment and because there are, there are some al alternate media, underground papers and, and radio things and stuff, uh, there's the beginning of a way to get that out. What I'm really much more concerned about is how are we going to get out and make that clear to people, as clear as that situation was, the whole process that goes on that whole time, how it is that the media never thought about doing it that way before. Uh, you know, uh, and how it is, how it is, look, right. how it is with city planning, right? City planning is, is this whole humane thing. And the health system is this whole humane facade for a lot of very definite control measures that go on. And there's a whole process that's not something that you can always see the outcome of. And sometimes you want to get it before you see the outcome. I mean, it would have been nice to get all that before Fred Hampton got shot up, you know. Uh, and uh, but, how are you going to do that? Uh, sure. Also, there's another, there's another question that comes to my mind when you, you speak of, uh, of control of the police. Uh, uh, and this type of thing. Uh, if you don't, if we shouldn't question the whole process of court procedures and, mm -hmm. and police, right. uh, whether you need this type of process for the type of thing that we want. If you're going to have the people taken hold, uh, then uh, you better, you, uh, it seems to me, you might question as to whether you want police in the picture at all. I don't care who control them. Uh, 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 I have been in, in court situations, been in jail several times myself. And uh, and uh, and I don't uh, uh, I don't I don't even talk in court. They have to drag me to court. They have to literally drag me, and I make one statement as to why I'm not going to participate in, in in the stupid situation, and let them go and have their party, uh, uh, because uh, the reason being is that I don't see courts. Uh, you see people talking about justice. If if you even if I believed in justice, and I doubt if I do because I don't know what justice is. I, I certainly don't think you can get it in that type of a set setup. And therefore, I, I, I don't put myself in a position as recognizing their right or anyone's right to sit them, somebody gonna make a judgment on me. I mean, who's just sure. as imperfect as I am, who, do, who, who, do, who, who does stupid things just like I do, and, and he, may, he may do some pretty wise things occasion, as I do occasionally, but no better, no worse than me. He's going to make a judgment, going to send me to jail, this type of thing. Uh, now, I think to be, uh, that is, I think when you look at what happened to Barbie Seals, actually the court set up is such that when that little man behind the desk with this robe on, when he speaks, he's absolute God in that court. This is one thing to why this, that's why I won't participate in. How can this man sit up there? He, when he says shut up, he means shut up, and he's got all these cops and everybody else to enforce you shutting up. And this I cannot abide. I cannot be in a situation and participating. You can drag me in there, but for mine to sit up there and participating is one thing. And when he told Bobby Seale to shut up, don't think, uh, now sure, Bobby Seale was set up and Bobby Seale uh, perhaps going to be crucified. But that particular part of his crucifixion is not just against Bobby Seale. Any person who, act, who, who would have sat there and would have demanded that Bobby Seale did, his right to speak when he wanted to speak, not when someone told him to speak, not when the rules suggested that he wow. speak, but that Bobby Seale spoke when he wanted to, it would have happened to anyone. Manson in California did exactly the same thing that Bobby Seals did. He disrupted the court and demanded that he represent himself, and it was granted. Well, you see, uh, right. Uh, well, uh, 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 you know, what we're saying is that 
uh, that the federal government is saying to, to black people, uh, you don't have any rights, or the white people are saying that you don't have any rights that we're bound to respect. Now, Bobby Seals today is in Connecticut. Uh, he's facing a murder trial. Yes, I know. Uh, this is the second phase. You see, the first phase was to see how successfully they can get away with bounding and gagging a black man in, in court. Now, it's, the, it's, it's, it's coming to the question uh, if they can get away with electrocuting them or putting them in a the gas chamber for no other reason but what they say he did, uh, regardless of his innocence or his, or his guilt. The government said that he committed murder, and, and, and it, it's their duty to place him in the electric chair. And if the people, again, sit back and, be, and remain silent, I just want to say that uh, we don't have any intentions of, of letting Bobby be crucified, because uh, uh, we'll do all within our power uh, to disrupt, and, and it's been stated that we will turn off the electricity in this country. This is, uh, this is not a hollow threat, because uh, uh, the situation is so bad now that if, those, if, if the pigs can just lead Bobby to the electric chair and sit him in there and pull that switch, then it's all, it's all over for the people in this country. Because it's, it's already been proven that they've bound and gagged it, and now the Supreme Court made it legal. They said it was justified. Or, or, or judge or, or anybody can do this to, to somebody in the courtroom. And uh, if, 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 the, the, if the people don't, don't, don't sit up and take notice of this and start uh, making up some kind of alternative or some ultimatum, an ultimatum should have been made to the government uh, when Fred Hampton was murdered, when Bobby Hutton was murdered, when Huey P. Newton was uh, uh, put in jail on some wild, uh, uh, trumped up charges. Ultimatums should have been popping up all over this country. Yeah, there ought to be one that. every day because sure, because he had, bad as bad as Bobby Seale got treated, he at least you know had the beginnings of a trial. Most people don't even get trials. I mean, the the court system in this country works to it, it's, it's just incredible. Most most people get convicted on pleas of guilty. Uh, it's a minority of defendants in the in the, in the court system who even get to the stage of trial. Those who get to a jury are an even smaller number. And you can look at the statistics for sentencing, and you find that you find that there's not equal justice at all, I mean, regardless of what color you are, because if you plead guilty, you get the lightest sentence. If you get convicted at a bench trial without a jury, you get a slightly longer sentence. If you demand a jury, supposedly you're right, you demand a jury and the jury convicts you, you get the longest sentence of all. And you can just see that progression, you know, you can draw a graph and it and goes also, straight up like that. Also, you know? if you have certain, if you come out of a certain family, this is black or white or certain connection. I know of cases of black people uh, getting off because of certain connection. And this is done every day in court. So uh, that's why it was what I, partly what I meant about justice, that I don't know what justice is. And uh, if I knew what it was, maybe I wouldn't really be for it. Anyway.